Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Digital Ocean Deploy. Uh, my name is Otto Kogic. I work as a uh, senior developer advocate at MongoDB. And with me, I have um, Adrian Taka, who is also a senior developer advocate. And um, since DigitalOcean announced that they now allow you to deploy uh, manage MongoDB, we thought we would come and share a couple of tips and tricks uh, to using MongoDB. And um, you know whether you're new to MongoDB or you've used it five years ago and uh, are interested in kind of diving back in, we wanted to share some of the, the new things, some of the exciting things, and just share some of our um, coolest things that, that you could do with MongoDB. So uh, we'll kick it off with uh, Adrian to share our first tip. All right, so you may know this already, but if not, it's always worth reiterating because it's kind of one of the coolest things of why you would even wanna start with MongoDB. And that is the flexible data model. So here you see an example of a document. It has all kinds of data there. You can store strings like your name. Uh, you can store integers or numbers like the age. You can even store other objects like you see with the address here or even an array of objects like Jane's favorite colors. So this kind of flexible data model is super awesome because as you start creating your applications, most of the time you really don't know what your data model is going to look like yet, especially if you continue to iterate on your application. But with a flexible data model, you can change it as needed and it's not going to be as much of a problem for you. So the flexible data model is incredibly key to the document model overall that MongoDB is based on. Awesome, but you know the flexible data model does give you a lot of power, but it also gives you a lot of responsibility. And um, a question that I often get asked, and it's being asked in the uh, DigitalOcean Discord channel right now: How do I enforce a, a schema, or do I even want to do it? And um, you know, there's many different ways you can do it, but I think the best way to do it is just natively with uh, MongoDB's enforceable JSON schema. So. Uh, what you can do here is actually have that flexible data model, but enforce your documents in the database to fit your needs. So here we have an example where we're requiring each model that comes into the specific collection to have a name, age, and favorite colors property. But we don't limit it there. You know, in addition to enforcing which fields are required or not required, you can also um, filter on properties. So the name, it has to be a string. The age has to be an integer, but not only does the name have to be an integer, it has to be at least 13 or higher. So with the enforceable JSON schema, you can add additional validations and additional checks on top of your, um, on top of your data model. And we can take it even one step further. <clears throat> So uh, with, the with the enforceable JSON schema, you know, we can enforce as, as deeply nested a as we need for, for our documents. So you know, if we have an array, we can make sure that all of the items are true. And additionally, you know, we're not just limited to the set list of uh, validators like minimum, maximum, you know, does it have a, a length? We can also uh, run patterns, it's so a regular expressions, or even our own, write our own code to implement uh, JSON schema validation. So we would simply write a JavaScript function that would run any arbitrary code to verify whether we can store this document or not. And the best part about enforceable schemas in MongoDB is that they are optional. And even if you do have an option, even if you do have an enforceable schema, with the right permissions, you can bypass the schema validation and force a document to be written. So if you are an admin and you just want to get a document in that doesn't necessarily conform to the schema, you can add it to the database. All right, next step, it seems pretty simple, but it's still very worth noting that these are all of the official supported drivers. And if this looks a little difficult to read, I'll go ahead and just read them off. We do have a C driver, C++, C sharp, which is really good because we also have um, a Unity uh, driver, or our C sharp driver is starting to work with Unity, which is great for games. And if you've ever seen some of our stuff, uh, another colleague of ours, Nickerboy, likes to create a lot of gaming tutorials with MongoDB. 
Uh, we have Go, we have PHP, we have Rust, uh, Java, Python, pretty much any language that you might be using or would like to learn how to use uh, is probably supported by us with one of these official drivers. So no matter which programming language you are using and are thinking of using in coordination with MongoDB, we probably have a driver for that. Um, and we also have a lot of really great quick starts as well. And we'll get to those in a moment in terms of our uh, additional resources for where you can learn how to use MongoDB with the supported drivers. And with the uh, supported drivers, um, all of the drivers come with support for the MongoDB aggregation framework. Now, if you're not familiar with the, what the MongoDB aggregation framework is, it is essentially a pipeline for uh, working with your documents. So within the aggregation pipeline, you have a series of stages that process documents. They can filter documents out, they can match documents, they can group them, they can add additional fields onto them, remove fields. Essentially, however you wanna model your data and however you wanna access your data, the MongoDB aggregation framework is here to, to help you do it natively on the server so you don't have to do it uh, you know, on your client side or, or at your application later. And to show one example uh, of how this works, let's assume that we have a uh, database of movies. So we have a collection of all sorts of movies that were released in the last you know, 10, 20 years. And we wanna see which studios have had the best rated films. So which studios produce you know, the, the best uh, movies. So we can create an aggregation on our movies collection. And in this case, we're saying, get us all of the movies from the year 2017 group so, you know, we just want all of the movies and we want to group it by the studio. So which company produced the film? And then we're going to sort them in descending order by their IMDb rating and limit it to the top 10. So running this aggregation, instead of getting a list of movies, what we're going to get back is a list of studios in uh, descending order that have the best rated movies in the year 2017. And we do this with just four lines of code. Now, uh, the aggregation framework is really, really powerful, and it's very difficult to master, but once you do, you unlock limitless possibilities. And one of the, the coolest things about the aggregation framework is that you can add, just like with the enforceable schema, where you can add your own functions and your own functionality, with the aggregation framework, you can add your own JavaScript functions to aggregate the data however you want, accumulate it, build custom accumulators, or really anything you want to do, you can do it directly on the MongoDB server. So another really, really cool thing about MongoDB is something called change streams. <clears throat> Excuse me. So chain streams are these really cool piece of MongoDB where if you needed to pay attention to either uh, any kind of changes, whether that's changes on your document specifically, that granular, or if you wanted to look at an entire collection or even database, you can do so. You can react to these kinds of changes in your data. And so an example of that would be something like this. So let's say we had a collection of comments, which we would define here. And then uh, let's say we wanted to watch that entire collection. This is all we need to do to kind of instantiate this change stream. We're saying, watch this entire comments collection. And then based on some change, say something, you know, whether that's a, an upsert, an insert, a delete, in this case, it's a pretty generalized, something has changed in the collection, you can write whatever you need to, to do something in reaction to that change. Another really awesome thing about this is that you can also build a pipeline. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. Let me take a drink. Okay. <clears throat> Coffee makes everything better. All right, so mm -hmm. we have a pipeline here, and let's say you do not want to watch the entire collection. Maybe you need only a very specific change that you need to pay attention to. In this case, you can use something like this, which is a pipeline. And in this particular case, we are looking at the full document, and we only want to pay attention to if um, someone named Alice, or someone who has a username that is named Alice, uh, is 
uh, causing this change. So with this kind of pipeline, you can kind of uh, tweak and very much configure what you want your chain stream to be watching. So now in this case, uh, we're watching an inventory collection. And instead of watching the entire um, collection, we're going to watch specifically within the inventory collection anything that changes that matches our pipeline. And as before, if anything matches this pipeline and does change on this particular thing, uh, then we do something with it. So chain streams are super powerful in terms of reacting to changes and making sure your applications are reacting as quickly and as real time as possible. Um, if, again, another really cool way that we implemented this as a bonus tip is we actually made a game with this. Um, if you've ever seen Scribble where you're drawing on a canvas, we actually used chain streams to update the other player's canvas with the same type of strokes. So that's just an example of what you can do with chain streams that are kind of outside of the box, not necessarily always with data. But in that case, we were paying attention to the coordinates of the canvas. But it's the same concept. Something changes in the data, you can do something with it, and you can do it because of chain streams. So chain streams give you that kind of real-time functionality, talking to all the different clients. Um, but the next feature that uh, I'm super excited to talk about is client-side field-level encryption. And uh, this is a feature, you know, I come from a security background and uh, field-level encryption essentially allows you to encrypt uh, the data in your MongoDB documents on the, you know, within the database. So. When you're using MongoDB and you know you're using MongoDB by default uses authentication and TLS encryption to you know protect the data in transit, and with the MongoDB encrypted storage engine, the data that is stored on disk is also encrypted. But if you have a you know malicious user that gains access to the database, or you know if you give a vendor access to the database, then they can potentially access these protected fields. But with client-side field-level encryption, we can encrypt the data in the document so that only the correct user can see the data. For everybody else, it's just going to be a jumbled mess. So in our example here, we have uh, this user, John Doe, we have their address, and then we also have their phone number and social security number. But we wouldn't necessarily want that phone number and social security number to be accessible to anybody that has access to the database. So with client-side field-level encryption, we tell um, we tell MongoDB that the phone number and the social security number fields should be encrypted, and now they are going to be invisible to anybody that, that's accessing, even you as the administrator. So the only person that knows the, the value for the phone and the social security number is the user that inputted it from, from their client application. All right. So we've talked about a lot of the really cool things about MongoDB and to add to that is the tools that you can use with which to work with MongoDB and one of our favorites is the MongoDB for VS Code extension. So as you can see here in this little animation, uh, there's a lot that you can do with this. This is really great for connecting to your data. Uh, you can explore the documents in your data. You can see the schema of your data. You can actually run playgrounds in the MongoDB extension. And what playgrounds are, are kind of like sandbox areas, which are great for building your aggregation pipelines or just kind of uh, building queries to see what kind of data you can get back. So this is really, really nice for when when you're um, creating those kinds of queries and making sure the data that you're uh, that you're getting back is the data that you expect, um, and uh, what was the other thing there? Oh yeah, sorry, the animation is catching me off guard. But yes, the VS Code mm -hmm. extension is a really really nice place to be able to play around with this kind of data uh, and to be able to work with your data directly in VS Code without an additional tool. However. <laughs> However, for our last tip, uh, we have MongoDB Compass. And MongoDB Compass is a GUI interface for your MongoDB database, but it's so much more than that. You know, it, it is free to use, um, whether you're using MongoDB on DigitalOcean or self-hosted, a MongoDB Compass is a free tool that's going to help you visualize your data. And we have, uh, you know, five or six different tabs in here that will help you, one, look at your data. So, so in this first tab, the documents, you're able to view your data, make changes to it, as well as add documents in a very, uh, you know, in a very easy to use uh, user interface. 
Um, so, you know, we, first we can visualize our data. Next, we have aggregations. So talking about that aggregation pipeline from, from earlier, if you are, uh, you know, just getting started with MongoDB and trying to learn the aggregation pipeline, what better way to do it than um, then try to create the different stages visually and see what type of results you get back. This tool helped me tremendously and I still use it every day uh, when writing aggregations because it really helps you kind of visualize what you're doing, break everything up, and then you can with uh, with one click export that aggregation pipeline and paste it directly into your um, application code and, and have it run just to save. Um, from there, we have the schema tab, which helps you visualize what your schema looks like. And in here, this is you know really good information to see what type of data is being added and whether or not uh, you know you should consider adding uh, schema validation. You know, if you're getting many different fields that are getting conflicting data, then it might be time to um, add some, some JSON schema validation. But if not, this is a great overview of the type of data that your documents are made up of. From there, we have our explain plan, which helps you uh, kind of, again, visualize how your queries are being executed. Are they using indexes? Are they running quickly? You know, that this is another visual tool that, that you can find out, at, you know, if you're using the console, you can get this data um, via the terminal, but, <clears throat> but I always like having a visual representation of what is going on, what the different stages are and how long it, it took. From here, you can also create indexes. So um, you can view the indexes that you have already created. You can create new ones and see how much data they're using up, what fields they're, they're um, acting on, and make any changes as needed. And then finally, the, the coolest part is that validation. So if you do decide that you need to enforce your schema validation, you can write your validation script in here, paste it, and it's going to tell you exactly which documents in your existing collection uh, pass the, the validation, which ones fail validation, and then you can decide what to do. What do you, are you gonna reject incoming documents? Are you going to accept them, but warn the user that, you know, they need to be using a, a different schema? You know, MongoDB Compass is just that great visual tool to help you get started with MongoDB. And even for advanced um, developers and people that use MongoDB every day, it's still a great visual tool to see what is going on under the hood. Absolutely. So that was the big caveat of however, right? Both tools are really great and serve their purposes, but this is definitely a great start to getting comfortable with the MongoDB language. And with that, that's kind of our best tips and tricks that we'd like to share with you. We have these additional resources. We have our developer hub, which is where we share all of these really in-depth tutorials, demos, uh, quick starts that I mentioned for all of the drivers. They are on developer.mongodb.com. And another really awesome place is the community forums where both Otto and myself and the rest of MongoDB, as well as a really great community of MongoDB users, are all there and just kind of helping each other out. So if you have a question about a university course, a question about MongoDB in general, or have some really, really specific driver question, please post it there as we will definitely get to you with an answer. Or so maybe somebody else will have an answer that might not even be from us. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, after this talk, we will be in the uh, DigitalOcean Deploy uh, Discord channel. So if you have additional questions about any of these features or anything MongoDB related, uh, please feel free to, you know, ask us, reach out to us on, on Twitter or, or on the MongoDB community, and uh, we, are, we are here to help. And thank you. Thank you so much for having us, and we hope you learned something. <laughs>